Scotland has a lot of creepy stories and myths and urban legends that are strange. I thought I'd share six creepy stories, legends, myths from Scotland that I find pretty interesting. Here we go. So possibly the most famous one is the Loch Ness Monster, or as we like to call her for short, Nessie. She's this huge monster with a big long neck that lives in Loch Ness in the Highlands. The earliest reports of her were written in the 6th century when an Irish monk saw some locals burying a man next to the River Ness. The monk went up to these men and asked what they were doing and they said that this man had been attacked and dragged underwater by a water beast. I don't like to think that was Nessie because I don't like to think of Nessie as being vicious. <laughs> I mean the 6th century was a wee while ago so I reckon she could have changed a lot. She's probably mellowed out a lot by now. Nessie was brought to the world's attention when in 1933 a couple apparently saw this large monster walking across the road in front of their car next to Loch Ness. There's been loads and loads of reports of sightings of Nessie since but you have probably seen the surgeon's photograph which is one of the most if not the most famous photos of Nessie. It was taken in 1934 by Robert Wilson. Most people agree that it was a hoax and people thought it was just probably driftwood or an otter or something. Don't know how it could be an otter but Apparently it was a wooden head and neck attached to a kid's submarine toy. People still flock to Loch Ness to catch a glimpse of the monster, so who really knows if Nessie's real or not? She totally is though. So another creepy Scottish legend is, is this one. <laughs> There's a cave that's 8 miles south of Girvan that was said to be in the 16th century the home of the famous cannibal Sonny Bean. I think I might do a video about him, but long story short, the legend goes that Sonny Bean and his mad girlfriend or wife or whatever she was they had loads of kids, grandkids, there was 48 of them in total like incest galore, like into the cess <laughs> what? and they snuck up an unsuspecting victims in the night, killed them and then ate them just a normal life then they supposedly killed over a thousand people like the hills have eyes is apparently based on Sonny Bean you can see why, pure mental the family were eventually arrested and taken to Edinburgh and sentenced to death. Whether or not it's a true story, y you just never know, do you? See, when I'm hill walking, I always feel like I'm being watched by some sort of like weird mountain people. I think I've watched too many horror films, but I reckon it could be a thing. One of my favourite stories is about one of the mountains in the Cairngorms called Ben McDewey which is said to be haunted by the big grey man. Despite being well known locally, it became more widely known when Professor Colley told his story. He said, I was returning from the cairn on the summit in a mist when I began to think I heard something else than merely the noise of my own footsteps. Every few steps I took I heard a crunch, then another crunch as if someone was walking after me, but taking steps three or four times the length of my own. I said to myself, this is all nonsense. I listened and heard it again, but I could see nothing in the mist. As I walked on and the eerie crunch crunch sounded behind me, I was seized with terror and took to my heels, staggering blindly among the boulders for four or five miles, nearly down to the forest. Whatever you make of it, I do not know, but there is something very queer about the top of Ben McDewey and will not go back there again myself, I know. Most people report feeling something strange and sensing a presence or hearing like footsteps or hearing something strange in the neighbourhood. There are a few theories about the big grey man, one of which is about a cloud inversion called the Brock Inspector. So the Brock Inspector is when there's a cloud inversion and your shadow's cast on the cloud and that gives the illusion of a big grey man. So who really knows what it actually is but there are loads and loads and loads of reports of people experiencing weird things on Ben McDewey and there's a book about it as well that I've not read but I really want to read so yeah. The next one I have an entire video about but I thought I'd include it because it's a really good I think it's I think it's interesting. In Dumbarton next to Overton House there's a bridge that was built in 1895 and it's Overton Bridge and it's where 50 to 60 dogs have leapt to their deaths. More dogs than that have tried but they haven't succeeded but 50 to 60 dogs have actually died from leaping from the same part of the bridge each time. It's a 50 foot drop as well which is mental. Some dogs that survived the first jump then tried to jump again when they went back. The main theory of why these dogs jump is because of a mink, a mink smell below but some people reckon that there aren't actually any minks in the area. Hmm. And most people reckon it's some sort of animal that the dogs smell and then they try and jump not realising there's a 50 foot drop obviously. People also say that the bridge and the house are haunted by Lady Overton. Some people have experienced a weird prodding in their back 
or like someone kind of urging them towards the edge of the bridge. It's also a site of human tragedy because in 1994 a man threw his two week old baby from the bridge because he believed it was the devil incarnated. The man then tried to commit suicide himself by jumping off the bridge but his wife stopped him and the baby unfortunately died the next day because of his injuries. The man believed that he and his son were going to spread a virus around the world and the only way to save the world was to end their lives. The last two are pretty famous Scottish myths. One is the, the Kelpie. The Kelpie or the Water Kelpie is a shape-shifting spirit that haunts streams, rivers and lochs and appears as a horse but can also change into human form. There are loads of different variations of the myth and what Kelpies actually look like but because of the shape-shifting, although they're mainly male, they can take the form of a beautiful woman and lure men to capture and kill them. But they're particularly attractive and dangerous to children uh, when they appear as a horse. The kids climb onto the horse's back but then can't get off and then the horse then drowns them and eats them. Or rather the Kelpie, not the horse. Yeah, I'm good at telling stories. Kelpies are pretty, um, pretty scary. Oh, if you haven't been to Falkirk, by the way, there's the these massive horse heads called the Kelpies in Falkirk and they're really cool. Just go and see them. The last one I'm going to talk about are Selkies. Um, they're also found in Irish folklore and Icelandic too. I thought that Selkies were supposed to be scary, dangerous creatures, but apparently they don't have to be. They can be the victims in a lot of the situations. They appear as seals in the sea, but then they can shed their skin to take human form on land. Or to take human form, they have to shed their skin. Male Selkies are said to be like really good looking. They're the more predatory of the two. The women Selkies are seen as more of the prey and the male are apparently more of the, the predatory ones. They're said to have this like magical, seductive power over women and they prey on women that are unsatisfied with their lives. They can only remain in human presence for a short period of time. They can get their seal skin stolen so it's normally the females that get their seal skin stolen so when this happens it means that they're the property of the male or the person that stole their seal skin. But then they're under the hold of the human. Sort of like a forced marriage. But yeah there's so many more stories I could, have, I could mention in a video. So many more myths and legends and old folklore. I could honestly make an individual video about all the things that I just mentioned bar the suicide bridge because I've already made a video about that. There are so many stories relating to each of these things that I just feel like in themselves they'd be an interesting video so I don't know, let me know what you would fancy. Any other Scottish myths and legends that you want to hear about? I know there are so many. So that's everything, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!